Yo, episode six. In. Free game, Free game Friday. Friday. Episode six. That's episode, episode seven. Epi- episode seven. We Damn. shot. Damn. Yeah. Episodes yeah. to talk about consistency. Consistency. Yo, this episode is brought <laughs> to you by the homies, King Palm. Well, it's brought to you by some real niggas, but Bye. man, we got support from King Palm. I only choose to endorse brands I actually use and fuck with, and I just love their energy there. They make these fucking uh, wraps that you could stuff, right? And each one is flavored. It got a little pack in it. So the mango one really tastes like mango. They got banana cream. Like, Ooh. it's a really great time. And it burns hella slow. It's not, it doesn't burn as fast as a joint. And then it doesn't have all, like, the uh, negative properties of a backwood or of a swisher or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, it's a fucking banana leaf. Really natural, really good. I just enjoy them. And they good people, man. Yeah. They just good people. They got dope merch. Shout out real niggas supporting Thanks. other real niggas, man. And That's what this shit is really about. it's slow. Like, when you hit it, it be, like, smooth. It's a good yeah. time. Tope was it's talking about how much time. he loved them, too. I love them. Yeah, those are, my fa- those are my new favorite rap. Ooh. Right. No, favorite. For Endorsed real. Endorsed by Go Great Go get White. you some. I don't even got a coupon <laughs> code, nigga. This just real nigga shit. On God. <laughs> Go get you some. <laughs> All right, let's go. Y'all know how this go. Dope. We're going to pull some questions and uh, answer some shit. We got Tope here today for the producers. And um, can we just put it in the stack? Oh, you can't read. Don't read them before. And then we just pull from the stack. He asked the rules. Huh? He asked for the rules. For the for the what? For the rules. Now you coming up with all these brand new rules. (laughs) Who asked for the the rules? Show him, he said. You asked for the rules? Yeah, all right. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Hey, y'all know how this goes. We're going to pull some questions <laughs> and we're going to ask them. Whatever we get done in 30 minutes, you feel me? <laughs> no. I didn't ask right. no <laughs> Do you go through anyone to publish your music? Like TuneCore, United Masters, etc. cetera. So uh, I don't believe United Masters does publishing. TuneCore does have a publishing administration, which I went through when I first started releasing music. But I was doing it improperly. I didn't have no knowledge. I just ended up checking the box because it was offered to me. And, uh... Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend going through there. But um, I go through Song Trust. I have an account with ASCAP. I use Song Trust to collect on the admin side, and then I use Sound Exchange. Yee. Solid. Come on. Who next? <laughs> I like this one. The legendary toe. <laughs> this is from Digital CC. Why you why you only do one verse a song? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's how it was written too. I feel like that's how they asked it. So I don't I don't do one verse a song. I just make a song. Right? And that could end up being a verse, a hook, a bread, whatever the fuck I, I think of during that time. So when I'm done, I'm done. I don't have nothing else to say. Yeah. I feel like I say more shit in one verse than than niggas say in an album. So you feel me? We just keep it short and sweet. Yeah, be, be thankful. <laughs> yeah, right. Be grateful, nigga. I could give no verse. <laughs> <laughs> then y'all be out here listening to right, yeah. <laughs> This one is about even.biz. Shout out even. Sheesh. If this is this your startup, tell us more about this model and this deal you have with them. So even is a startup and it's owned by Matt Rodriguez and he's a uh, absolutely incredible. Just uh he get it. He's trying to build the future. I do not own this, but this is a company I have equity and a stake in. I was one of the first artists to help launch, and I helped really come up with some new ideas to make it a bit more innovative. And Thanks. we found out a lot of kinks that work and don't work. So I do have equity in this company. I think it's a, a company that, as an indie, you should support. They're supporting indie artists for you to go direct to consumer and uh, just sell your art and maintain control of your art. And it uses blockchain technology, but not in a way where everyone's like, oh, Confused. we own a blockchain, we <laughs> NFT. It's like, it's not even a big deal. We're just utilizing the technology and the utility of it because it allows us to get paid instantaneously. It allows people to, to have a, a tracking of all of their receipts and shit, everything that's happening on the network and just really utilizing it for what it's for. Right. And a lot of artists aren't selling their music direct to fans anymore. They're just relying on streaming. And if you're not sure how to sell your music direct to your fans, even makes it really simple. Right. Shout out, Mag. Come on. (laughs) Your turn. It's on me. 
Did you get that bag? <laughs> Did you ever get man, that bag? Man, I got a whole bunch of bags, man. I went and got a whole bunch of bags. The bags never stop, man. We still getting the bags. <laughs> Tote. Man, we getting them. Oh, this is my question? Right, nigga was about to give a speech. Bro. Right. <laughs> so I'd about like the to bag think, that I got. Uh, my grandma. <laughs> I'd like to thank my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is from Cameron Bank Crow Hundo. Bank Row Hundo. Excuse me. How do you how do you deal right. with writer's block? La Russell? Well, you used to be a rapper. How do you deal with writer's block? Um I quit rapping. Because <laughs> you couldn't get past the writer's block. Writer's block and quit rapping. <laughs> Nigga, I quit. What? That's how. <laughs> That's hella funny. Hey, when I have writer's block, I just don't write. Uh, I never force write. If I don't have shit to say or I can't come up with anything, I just don't do it. It's not that serious. You'll have another day. Just let that shit pass. You know, everything's a moment. And when you finally got something to talk about, that's when you write. Yeah, but no, but for real, I think go live life. Like the best, the best thing is like to go live life so you have something to write about and experience. Like you're stuck in the house all day. You want to, you don't have nothing to talk about. Go live life, like whatever it is, you know, and you have something to experience. It's the same with making beats. Like get out of the house, go hang with the homies, go ride your bike and come back and, and make some stuff when you feel inspired. Come on. Shout out bikes. Shout out bikes. Shout out Trek. Facts. Trek, if y'all want to fuck with us, man, we open. I love my Marlin 7. I've had about three so far. Shout out Trek. <laughs> Shout out, Trek. <laughs> this is from Fresco underscore GP. Real nigga. Will you be writing a book on your life and how you came up? Several. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Several books. Yes, yep. Does your family... Okay, this is from Ace One. Does your family involved make your journey easier? Yes. <laughs> Definitely, it's, it's right. much easier when you got your mom and your pops and your cousins and sisters and shit support. That that definitely alleviates a lot of pressure and a lot of a lot of you. Just, it just feels better. Right, that's why I tried to spread them out. But. <laughs> All right, this is from Free Game Scola. <laughs> How did you came up with the name Free Game Fridays? He said copyright infringement. How he free, ga- he free game scholar. Uh, well, me and LaRussell have really legendary talks just about like the music game, innovation, things to take what we're doing to the next level. And uh, we were like, damn, these are legendary conversations. We should be filming this. This is free game. Right. And then, you know, free game Fridays just has a ring to it. So here we are. Come Every on. Friday, he giving you free game. He like y'all took my shit. <laughs> Who he got? He got a name. His name free game Scola. Oh damn! We fuck right. with you, man. Come on, we love free game, man. That's how it's supposed to That's be. That's how you feed the people. Game is to be told, not sold. What equipment did you use to do and record the live performances, and what equipment did you upgrade to? Mm. Um, so for live performances, we use Sennheiser wireless mics or Shure. Um, sometimes I use the Telefunken, uh, I think it's called an M21 or something. I really like that mic because it's a condenser mic, but you could use it on stage. Um, mixer, we use, we started off with a Zoom L12. We still use that for live sessions. For the shows, we use the Behringer X32. Uh, we use an S32 Snake. Um, what else we use? We use receivers. DI boxes uh, to go from the DJ boards. Wireless receivers are by Sennheiser. Um, what are your speakers? We use the iRig to send the audio from the mixer to the phone for IG Live. For speakers, I have the Bose L1 Pro 32s. Um, the DJ boards? DJ boards are, I don't remember. I think uh, DDJ something, something. Uh I think that's about it. That that sounds like everything that we kind of utilize a little decent amount. I yep. hope that works for y'all. And we use the Black Magic 4K to to film all the lives. You don't get this kind of game nowhere <laughs> else, <Right>. man. <laughs> nowhere and a, else. Oh, and a 14 millimeter camera lens. Oh, and for the podcast, we use a, a Zoom H8 uh, recorder. Sometimes we'll use Sennheiser boom mics. The, these are these are actually what is this Sennheiser? 
Sennheiser AT897. Shotgun mics. We use warm audio XLRs and TRSs. Y'all got everything we use, man. Go do something. Right. Go get, that bag. <laughs> Go get something done. Come on. That's crazy. Is it on me? Nobody could reach the cards, right? So he took <laughs> It, who's it on? It's you, I think. It's on me? Yeah. That's hella fun. No, I just read that one, so it's on you. <laughs> yep. I went to get a car, and I was like, what the fuck? And I fault. didn't want it to blow away. Smart ass. <laughs> this is from at and fault. How is the artist supported in regards to touring through the label or promoter? How is the artist supported in regards to touring? Huh. It depends on what type of artist you are. If you got a label, sometimes the labels will send an artist on a promo run or a tour run, and they'll cover all the costs for that. Uh, sometimes you'll get booked by a promoter, and they'll give you an advance and an upfront fee to do that performance. But if you're indie, generally it's probably you fronting the bill if you're not getting booked by someone else. Live Nation does touring deals with artists. Well, they'll front up a sum of money for you to go do dates. So it, it just depends on the type of artist you are. It's a few different ways you can get it off touring. How have you been touring lately? Independently in bookings. So um, anything that, that we sell tickets for directly, it shows that we book independently. We just start working with uh, ENT Legends for Naughty team. Shout They're incredible. <laughs> uh, Mac Agency with Drew. But uh, for the most part, for the last three, four years, we've always booked our own shows. So anything we sell tickets for is some shit we put together and booked ourselves. Anything that I'm not selling direct tickets for is something I was booked for and paid. Yeah. Game. Come on, where do you get this game from? <laughs> I ain't nowhere else in town. This is from One Packet. I'm an artist that has songs and videos ready to drop, but want to run my Facebook ads targeting Asians, as I am an Asian artist and feel like there is an untouched market in our community. Any tips on how to run ads efficiently? Yes. Yes. So I, I like to do, when I do ad targeting, I like to, oh. <laughs> I'm just <playing. laughs> I tell them. I'm just kidding. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. Well... <laughs> in my little Russell voice. <laughs> nah, go ahead, big dog. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> hey, no, so when you're doing your targeting, I like to target similar artists, platforms, and things that are uh, that I use. So in terms of similar artists, if you're someone, if you're Asian and you're targeting an Asian audience, depending on whether you rap or not, you may want to look at like a, uh, a Rich Brian or a Yuna or a Janae Aiko or a, a Twee, uh, anyone who's already a Tessie, anyone who's in that market, find your demographic, find the artists that are similar to the sound you make and have a similar audience that you're looking for. And then I would target platforms. So me, I frequent Breakfast Club, Audio Mac, Genius, Major Stage. So all the platforms you love, make sure you target those platforms. And lastly, target those little niche pages that you watch that niggas don't know but be in your search history because uh, your target audience is usually someone who looks like you or fuck with what you fuck with. So if you watching the late night cooking shows, put that shit in there because they probably watching that shit too. That's what I that's was going to say. That's the targeting game. I'm just right. <laughs> what he said. That's literally what I was going to say. And that's how you do it. <laughs> it's on me? Yeah. How could I best break my way into the industry as a producer? Hey, shout yeah. out to, 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 Can I get my two cents first? And then I, I, I think as a producer, you should find artists you love that are horizontal, not the ones who are already on. If you can get them, great. But find the ones around you that you love and build with them. Because then that, that brings your demand up. That makes everybody want to fuck with you. Just build with the people next to you. And eventually the people who you see as above you is going to be coming like, hey, you feel me? And get that pull. But build with the people beside you. But let me hand this off to a real producer. A multi-platinum hood. Right. <laughs> multi-platinum in a hood. <laughs> no, I think that's great advice. Like building with someone that's a peer. You know, building, building a brand with someone that's on your same level. I've literally watched producers that i know get skipped over because they tried to do the chase the placement route and it never worked out you know and every year like they're coming up short and it's five years later they could have built something with an artist you know that's something i've always believed in like 
I did a lot of work for free. I still do work for free to this day. And um, a lot of that free work put me in a position to get bags. So I think um, one, making sure your sound is right, making sure you're, you're actually at a, at a standard uh, industry standard level. And then two, building with those people around you, not being afraid to give away free beats and, and, and let that come back to you in, in, if, in a year or two or 10 years or whatever it may be. But uh, yeah, that, that, that building with someone next to you is definitely a, a gem, a key. On. Free game. It's free <laughs> game Friday. <laughs> I think it's your card, Toe. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just trying to grab some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. My hand slipped. <laughs> My hand Ended slipped. up in your pants. <laughs> right. You say, come get the card. Hold up. This is a roll up. At. Hold up. This is a roll up. Would you ever <laughs> send out a few surprises in the orders from items sold? Yeah, we actually do that often. It, it, when, we, when we first started shipping merch, I was doing it a lot because I was touching it even more. But, yeah, especially when, like, someone sends a, a certain sum or just spends a certain amount with us or just just like, hey, bro. See we your fuck name with often. You. Yeah, we see you often. We tossing some shit in. That's the beauty of doing it from home. We could we could call an audible at any given moment. <laughs> Shout out all the real niggas who still do that. This is from Malik Adams 8. What keeps you going? Um, the love of it, honestly. I feel like when I don't want to get out of bed or when I'm just whooped, um, I love it too much to just lay there and do nothing. There's always work to be done. There's always something new to learn. There's an uh, idea to try. So um, yeah, the love of it. I think if you don't love it, it makes it really hard to want to keep going. But when you love it, it makes it hard to stop. What keeps me going? King Kong. That's what keeps me going. <laughs> In water. <laughs> hey. This guy. How long did it take to find your sound in music? Sometimes I catch myself trying to sound like my influences. Nice. I think uh, sounding like your influences is a natural part to you finding your sound. Like for you to find your sound, you have to have something first for you to start like some type of blueprint i used to sound like every one of my favorite rappers at one point and eventually i tried to sound like all of them in one and that just naturally ends up you end up creating your own sound and as you form as a person and as a being you figure out how you like to rap how you like what beats you like and shit and that naturally just develops your sound so keep sounding like your influences like you want to try to replicate the greats you feel me? Kobe has his own style of play, but Jordan was who he was trying to mimic. You know, just naturally, you can't be anyone else. So as long as you keep trying, you're going to find some shit that worked for you. My bad. He got to get up and shit. Okay. Pass him this is a good one. Okay. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no at. Tieta, where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh. Did it really say Tieta? Yeah, I swear Oh, Ooh, yeah. thought, I put, thought I was putting her on the oh. spot. Get out. This one for T. This one for Tieta. Um, I I'm gonna be honest. I don't even think that far into the future. I honestly never really have. I think the biggest goal that I ever had was to go to college, and it's just because at the time I thought that that was like the way to make it out. Um, college is a scam for anybody who hasn't gone yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, after that, I, you know how like you'll set a goal and then you reach that goal and it's not, it doesn't like crazily change your life. Like it's still just you, but just now you have that thing. And now it makes you realize like, damn, all these goals that I set aren't really like going to change my life. It's right. like within that changes my life. So um, the work. Yeah, I don't really think about five years ahead. I think about today and right now and the work that I do now will make sure that in five years I'm living well. Ooh, come on, <laughs> theater. theater. I knew I would see you theater. here. I knew I would see you here. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been five years. Like, it's been five years. <laughs> I can never forget. Shout out to my long lost life. This is from only one. <laughs> this is for only one <laughs> renegade. What are some ways to improve your stage presence? Practice, practice, practice. Oh, don't forget practice. Practice. <laughs> hey, man, that's the only way to improve any function. The best way to get better at doing something is to do it. 
is to do it. Whatever you want to do, bro. If you want to be a better hooper, you have to go hoop, nigga. You can't sit at home watching tape. <laughs> you have to go hoop. Right. That is the best way to get better at some shit. It's to go do it. <laughs> Come on. Right. Like you can't replicate game speed like when you got to be in the game, play right. show. You got to play those shows. Do open mics. I, one thing when I used to rap uh, that I, I used to work on was like actually making eye contact with people in the crowd. On my first couple songs, I would come out and I'd really lock in with some of the people in the front row to let them know I see you, you see me, and I'm not scared to look at you. I'm rapping to you and mm. we're going to connect over the lyrics, some stuff like that. But that took three or four years of me rapping toward to the back of the room and to my shoes to understand <laughs> right. that I had to really show right. people I'm not scared and okay, also okay, being now. yeah <laughs> also being <laughs> being yourself like like bro be if you're funny be funny on stage you know what I'm saying if you're awkward be awkward but throw it in a cool way you know what I'm saying like be the more you're comfortable you're on stage the more you can be yourself the better your stage presence is and the more you can command people and tell them hey hands up or say this song say this part of the song whatever it is it just comes with comfortability and shooting them shots game speed right. white man go get your shine on theater theater <laughs> this is from projected project city underscore cody i went to college what would be the best reason to stay independent as an artist um the deals that you're getting offered are crazy they don't align with your values your morale or where you're trying to take your career or um even if like you do find a good deal if the people who are behind the deal don't align with your values or your morale or you just don't find um something that you feel like supports what you're trying to do like somebody like you who's so innovative if you were to like get put into a system that already existed it would have stifled your growth um, but it just really yeah. depends on what you're looking for. Um, if being independent better supports what you're trying to do, then stay independent. If having a big label mm -hmm. and somebody to do everything for you better supports that, then find a label. And I think one of the best parts is owning your shit. Like, imagine you get one song that blows and then you sign a deal. For your next three to four albums, you don't own shit. So Depending if on something, the deal if that you something sign? Yeah, but even if you get a major deal and you own it, they license it for 20 years. So, nigga, you don't own it. You you can't take it and collect your revenue right. where you want. You got to wait for them to pay you. So, no, it's <laughs> like you want to own some shit first, buy your own houses, and then go start building, you know, yeah. so you can get rent off there. But make sure you got something that you own. But you've actually been able to create, like, partnerships that don't exist where you, you still own your stuff. You're just splitting the profit. Yeah, me. Yeah. But I'm saying <laughs> but you should I don't talk have about a major that. label situation, yeah, and, which is why that. we don't have a major label right. situation because we couldn't work it to where we yeah. own it and have the license to, for it to make sense, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's possible if you if you find the right people in a major system. I'm not sure if you'll find it unless you're already. Yeah. Drake, <laughs> you know, or but young it does boy. seem like things are changing, and the more artists out there who like imagine the person watching this is the next you they should know that like you don't have to like when you talk to a label you should be vouching for owning your things and like going for profit splits and things like that i think when you were asking for those things it's so rare for somebody at your level you know you were in right. your early um years of breaking for people to be asking for that so they were like hell no nah, or they're just sending you this bullshit. but the more artists that ask for that or that demand that or that turn down deals because they're not getting that right the major system will have to change because they're not going to be able to sign any more artists to these slave talk deals. your shit. i think more like stuff like this the more artists know that that's possible like you can right. negotiate your terms like don't be afraid to negotiate and through learning through artists like LaRusso, like, bro, you don't have to go that right. route. Like, you now don't. you know, <laughs> hey, I want to do this, but I don't want this part of the deal. Like, don't be afraid to negotiate. Dude, That's dude. something you've done. Do not let them niggas convince you you ain't got no leverage because you don't stream well. Right. Nigga, do not let a nigga they convince talk you, to you who flew you out and paid for <laughs> your ticket to come to their <laughs> office convince you that you ain't got no leverage because you ain't got no stream. Right. Don't let a nigga who take you around the site and trying to hey can i buy you lunch and nigga right. to make to tell you you ain't got no leverage right. that's nah. insane and there's a <laughs> lot of independent labels that are coming up like npr and like uh what's johnny shipes is like? cinematic cinematic yeah there's a lot of uh labels that are breaking that are able to take better care of artists 
and have those types of deals. Like Shout out NPR, cool. man. J.R. McKee, a great guy, Facts. great team there. <laughs> Drew, Austin, man, every, every, Jazz, everyone there is just uh, incredible. The Jazz, the man. Jazz. Come on, shout out NPR. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was on you, and I, I, I we skipped, yeah. We got three more, three more. Yellow banana. Yellow, this is from Yellow Banana. Should writers focus on making their own music to gain traction or stay focused on writing for others? Ooh. I think it depends on what you want. Whatever you love or enjoy, if you enjoy writing for other people, I think you should keep doing that. I also think that's a way to break in to be able to write your own tracks for them to get more energy. Like you're able to get capital off helping someone else build a home so you could build your own house. If you love to make your own music, then make your own. I don't think you have to prioritize one or the other. Just mm -hmm. do them both. Yeah. Are these, are these some the action? Yeah. It's on me? Okay, for sure. I mean, we're going in a line, so, yeah. Uh, this is from Sheeta Paper Music. Is it better to stay independent? Oh, we kind of already just talked about this. Is it better to stay independent as an artist in this day and age? Is it better to stay independent? Right. I guess you kind of answered it. Right. It depends on what you want. Yeah. It depends on what you want. Last one? Or you want to do another? No, Cause that was No, nah, no, because nah, okay. nah, that was kind of. This is from Easy Sale. After it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? That's such a beautiful question. Um... Man, I was just talking about this with Sarai. Shout out Sarai, I love her. Um, I just wanna be remembered for, this sounds so corny, but just being a real nigga in the sense that like, I went out of my way to be kind to people and to do nice things for people and look out and do things that like, I truly didn't have to do, but I chose to because I wanted mm. to support other people's visions and their lives and their dreams. And um, yeah, just b for being a good person, honestly. you. That was probably a La Russell question. <laughs> I'ma see y'all for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> same though, same, right? I just wanna die a real nigga. Right? Give all the gain to my little niggas. Yeah, I think that's the ultimate goal, right? Ultimate goal. Yeah. You too, real a great white <laughs> <laughs> man a good person man a good a, a great person and a good musician those have been my goals like the last the goals of my last year just been like being a better person being a better musician and my whole life's gonna uh fall into place so yeah but being a better person first and that's something i'm still striving to do <laughs> <laughs> hey, niggas are stuttering <laughs> so right so, 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 still, still strive still right? striving and i want like oh, and I want all of the stories <laughs> that are told about me or the way people remember me to be consistent. Like, everybody should have... <laughs> that ass was fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I fuck this. Until next episode, y'all. I'm last done. Last one, last one. Okay. <laughs> At Mama B. Swing. <laughs> At Mama B. Swinging. How Wait. do you stay... <laughs> <laughs> Mama be Swanigan. <laughs> Mama be Swanigan. <laughs> right. How do you stay motivated when you miss the mark on a goal you had set for your business? Man, like Tieta touched earlier, we don't really set goals anymore. Um, anything that would be like a dream or a goal to us just turns into a task. It's not really like a, a goal or a mark to hit. It's like, I'm going to do that. That's right. it. There's no time constraint on it, no limit. We know if we do the work, we're going to get the result. It's as easy as that. So we no longer set goals. We just get up every day and do, oh, we want to throw a festival? Let's do all the shit that we need to do to make that happen, right? We want to do a Halloween show? Let's do all the shit we need to make it happen. Everything is just a task to us. Man, another great. beautiful episode of Free Game, Game Friday. Friday, man. Shout out King Palm because I really fuck with him in real life. You know, we don't endorse anything we don't enjoy. That's just not the right way to do it. I really enjoy them. They really show me a lot of love. So shout it's out our special right guest, to show Tope. Back, man. A great shout white. out to Great White. I heard different. they seen him swimming in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Sarai behind the camera directing we shit. We love her, man. Yeah. That's how y'all getting y'all merch on time and right yes. and, and, and in order. It's different. Come on. Until next time. <laughs>